the next division under plant kingdom that you have to remember very nicely are bryophyta okay bryophyta this is the next important division under plant kingdom one question that is almost expected in bryophyta is what do you understand when bryophytes are called amphibians of plant kingdom you can have a star mark also this is so important the bryophytes are called amphibians of plant kingdom okay, now what do you mean by amphibians you know the term amphibian means those animals which require both land and water for their sake of survival now how come bryophytes bryophytes are found in damp and moist places where they are found first point is they are found in damp and moist places damp and moist places says what means there is presence of water they are called amphibians that is they need both land and water because of the fact that they need land for the sake of survival normal living they need uh, soil for their taking up of nutrients they need air for that of like sunlight so it's normal but when they need water is at the time of reproduction that is when the male sex organ releases sperms at that time the sperms are being carried by the water and it reaches to the female sex organ and fertilization occurs again i'm telling for your sake when they need water is at the time of reproduction when the male sex organ of the bryophytes releases the sperm and that sperm is carried across the water by the current of water and it reaches to the female sex organ for the sake of fertilization that is conjugation of the gametes what is fertilization union or conjugation of the gametes so amphibians of plant kingdom clear why they are called amphibians because they need land for normal livelihood but they need water for that of reproduction that is continuation of the generation the second point under bryophyte which is very important is they are having no vascular tissues they are having no vascular tissues okay what do you mean by that no vascular tissues means they do not have any conducting tissues like that of xylem and phloem as we can see in case of highly organized plants in the later section so these vascular tissues or conducting tissues like xylem and phloem are not present in case of bryophytes the third point that you have to remember in case of bryophyte which is very important that they are small herbaceous plants means the their size is small and herbaceous means they are having a greenish structure they are having a leafy structure but they are not having root stem and leaf completely made as in case of this our model plant am i clear means they have herbaceous structure but they do not have distinct leaves they do not have distinct stem they do not have distinct roots but a not a made up structure and here we come across another word that is they have root like or stem like they have root like and stem like structure but in the very outset of the chapter i told you that you are going to get such like words in in diversity chapter so they have root like and stem like structure but they do not have direct distinct true roots or direct distinct true stems this is called rhizoids and these are called rhizomes what is they called they are called rhizoids means root like and they are called rhizomes means stem like mind it they are stem like they are not true stems they are not true roots so with this we conclude the four important characteristics under this bryophyta that is they are found in damp and moist places they are having no vascular tissues they are small herbaceous plants and they have root like and stem like structures one of the most important thing that i have already discussed is they are called the amphibians of plant kingdom now just for the sake of your learning i am telling that bryophytes are derived from the word bryo okay bryo means mosses bryo means mosses 
and phyta is plants i have already told in case of thallophyta so bryo means mosses mosses are what they are small herbaceous plants that cover the layer of any uh, bricks when exposed when that brick is exposed to continuous water so this is bryo all about bryophyta now examples of bryophyta that you have to remember is markensia rishia funaria i am telling one thing for you people that i am underlining every examples and you are going to learn about the essence of underlining at the end of this chapter i will discuss why i am underlining all that name of the examples so bryophyta is over so we have completed two divisions so the third division under plant kingdom is pteridophyta that is pteridophyta and they are commonly called snakes of plant kingdom previously it was amphibians of plant kingdom and it is snakes of plant kingdom they are called the snakes of plant kingdom because as we have seen the snakes they cannot walk they crawl on the ground similarly the members under pteridophyta cannot grow straight majority of the members need a support for their growing they have tender stems for their growth roots and leaves are normal as in case of the higher plants okay so in pteridophyta the first most important characteristic that you have to remember is for the first time in the entire plant kingdom there was the initiation of the vascular tissues there was the initiation of what the vascular tissues means when you cover thallophyta and bryophyta there was no conducting tissues there were no vascular tissues but when we reached the pteridophyta we got the vascular tissues how you got it the vascular tissues are xylem and phloem okay the vascular tissues are xylem and phloem the xylem is meant for conduction of water the xylem is meant for conduction of water from roots to plant parts and phloem is meant for conduction of food okay so xylem is meant for conduction of water from roots to various plant parts whereas phloem is meant for the conduction of food from leaves to various plant parts because leaf is the site of food production you get the food by means of photosynthesis and water by the suction of the roots you get the water so for the first time in the plant kingdom there was the vascular tissues into existence that is xylem and phloem the second property under pteridophyta are they have distinguished or differentiated roots stems and leaves in bryophyta what you got you got roots like stem like leaves like but here you got roots stems and leaves directly means they have now developed into true roots true stems and true leaves the reproduction in case of pteridophyte is by the means of spores is by the means of spores what do you mean by spores the spores are naked embryos the spores are naked embryos as you all know embryo means what after the fertilization of the male gamete and the female gamete you get the zygote isn't it you what you get you get the zygote after the zygote develops you get the embryo okay so the spores are naked embryo means there is no covering of the embryo and whenever wherever the spores fall on the ground in favorable condition it gives rise to a new pteridophyte it gives rise to a new pteridophyte so under pteridophyte the examples that you have to remember two examples at least you can remember one is first to write equisetum example is equisetum and another example you can write that is marsilia the two examples under pteridophytes are equisetum and marsilia 
Okay, so we conclude teridophyte. The three characteristics: one is vascular tissues are present, that is xylem and phloem are present for the first time in plant kingdom. Second is stems, roots, and leaves are present. And the third point that you have to remember is the reproduction is by means of spores, water spores. Spores are naked embryo. Example is Marsalia and Equisetum.